So let's cover Zen Motion. Zen Motion is the ability to move a running virtual machine from one server to another. Now, this is referred to in the Hyper-V world as live migration and in the ESX VMware world as vMotion. Really awesome feature, been around for quite a number of years and in different varying states. And this in 2018, it has gotten from all the vendors really, really good. I'm focusing specifically on the Zen server version as put together by XCPNG. This is not Citrix Zen server, but this feature, as long as you have the proper licensing, is supported with Citrix Zen server as well. So Zen is the open source hypervisor, XCP is the company that uh, spun this. You can get it for free at xcpng.org. I've done a few videos on this if you search for it. It's a great project. We moved away from Citrix and everything over to xcpng. All right, so now we covered some of those details. Let's talk about the setup first. Now, this right here is kind of the basic layout of our system. And this is uh, YED, Y-E-D, a software I use to do the graphing. It's just convenient and easy. I kind of like it, it's free. Um, and all the features I'm talking about here is all open source. So you can download and set up everything I'm doing here for free. Follow through my videos. I've got videos on how to set some of this up. So we have uh, my less than creatively named Xenifer and Xenifer 2 servers. And these are my two Zen servers that are the same server. It's important when you want to do live VM transfers that the processor architecture type be as similar as possible and best case scenario, exactly the same. And this is a problem when it comes to virtual machines because you have to think about why here. If the processor doesn't have the same architecture support and you're trying to move a live machine over there, the machine may need to reconfigure the processor uh, to match the settings or if they're losing features versus gaining features so that it may not work properly. The most ideal way to set this up is have the same processor. And obviously this won't work going from Intel to AMD because it's a major processor change. So you have to shut down the VMs to move them. They can still be moved between virtual machines. They just can't be moved while running, which is kind of the point of this, is you don't want downtime and you want to be able to maintenance things and you don't want to have to take your customers down. That's the beauty of these live migrations. So we have Zenifer here has a 10 gigabit connection via iSCSI as a transport layer over to FreeNAS. There's no switch in between, they're direct connected. And I've covered this iSCSI setup. I'm gonna have a new 2018 version coming out soon for those of you wondering, but it really hasn't changed much uh, in FreeNAS. So the VMs are stored here on FreeNAS, 10 gigabit connection. Another 10 gigabit connection, no switch, is directly to here. This is what it's referred to as a transfer network. So these are on the same uh, unmanaged switch network, which is this purple over here. So they can talk to each other via that network because the management interfaces are both here. But I added an additional direct link and I'm gonna show you how this works so I can choose the 10 gigabit to transfer. That way, instead of only transferring a gigabit, I actually peek out the hard drives and are able to transfer. So when the transfer occurs, because it's gonna move from one to the other, for this one, it'll be reading back and forth here and showing it, and, you know, doing the ice because you read. This has local storage on it. Uh, it has four drives in there, some enterprise hard drives. I believe they're Raptor drives, 10,000 RPM. So they're reasonably fast hard drives uh, locally. And this is convenient. That way, if I want to take down FreeNAS, I'd simply move the machines over to here and then I can maintenance my FreeNAS and move them back. Uh, it works perfectly fine. And I'm gonna show you the demo here of how it works. The only pause that occurs is the moment that the move is complete, the inter the switch has to realize that the MAC address is now over here because it move it keeps the MAC address the same and passes over to the other server. So the switch actually goes from seeing it on this port to seeing the MAC address on this port. So it's kind of about, I think it's about a one second pause uh, for that little switch to happen. It kind of like really quickly moving a network cable is what it's doing. It's doing it virtually. So it's happening really, really fast. Let's just show you how easy this is and how it works. So we're here in Zen Orchestra. This is the free version, the open source version of it that you self-support, self-maintain, hence the no support down here. Uh, so this is, once again, all open source, nothing special, no licenses needed. This is all XCPNG servers. Uh, and I've added my two servers here. Once you add the two servers in, XC in Zen Orchestra, it understands the resources between them, the information between them, and what's going on. So let's take a look at our VMs. Here's our Debian 9 Zen Motion YouTube demo. And actually go here. It's up and running. The IP address is 3.190. I'm logged into it, 3.190. So let's go ahead and do something. 
I'll pull up HTOP. Just so it's running and doing a thing. I don't think there's really any updates for it. And now we're going to choose the migration. So select host. Where's it going? So it's on Xenifer. So the only other one is Xenifer 2. So that's where it's going to land. Now I could choose if I wanted to what storage, but there's only one local storage. So I guess that's the only one I can choose. If you have multiple VDIs, you can actually spread them out and put them at different locations. So it gives you the detail. There's only one virtual hard drive on this particular box. So there's nothing no other choices on there. But if you have a, a, like a group of hard drives and you want to move them, you could scatter them around across different storage pools. Now, this is the important part. Select a migration network. Because it realizes that they also have this ETH1 and that is a shared network. This is something Zen Orchestra figured out. It was, hey, these both have the same IP ranges across the same network uh, for two different networks. One is the less incredibly named 10 gig to Xenifer and pool wide associated one. Pool side associated is the management network that both of these are attached to and it realizes this one's here because we added the network. All they do is you put a 10 gigabit card in each of these. It's just a standard copper cable between them. There's no switch and you just assign a static IP address to each one of these. I've done a video on how to set that up. Just real quick, I'll show you the network settings. So if you go over here to the hosts, here's the Xenifer host, Xenifer 2, network, 10 gig to Xenifer, 192.168.20.20, statically assigned. You just do that by adding a network and making sure you understand which interface it is. Obviously, this one is red, so it's not connected. This one is. It's a uh, dual port adapter. And then we go and look at the other one. We look at the Xenifer network. Same thing, I'll show you. It's add network. Both of them are connected because one connects the, both the same T320 dual port adapter and one's connected to FreeNAS, one's connected to there. And you can see because this one's 192.168.20.15 versus our FreeNAS, which is just simply called Storage 10G, is 192.168.10.15. Like I said, these are just direct connects. It's real quick like this. Nothing real special. You add them and do it. Maybe one day I'll do an entire video because I think sometimes people get confused about how all the uh, LAN and VLANs work on these, but it's it's not too difficult uh, once you kind of get the concept that there's virtual interfaces and physical interfaces and they don't all have to be attached the same way. Anyways, let's get back to the Zen motion. So now we're going to go ahead and hit OK and kick off the migration process. Now, I'm going to go here to all my VMs. You notice this isn't green, it's yellow. The yellow just means there's a process happening right now. Uh, that process in particular, when you mouse over it, it says running migrate send. We can go over here to task and see how it's going. Fairly quick. At 10 gigabit, it doesn't take long to move a virtual machine uh, from one to the other. And then the machine's completely running. So here's the uh, virtual machine here. Um, let's see if there's any updates for this. Probably not. Is it auto updates? Yeah, no updates. Uh, oh, found. Cool. Let's update it. While it's actually doing the motion, there's actually an update we can load. <laughs> move this out of the way so you can see the percentage, 30%. And you can see the machine just keeps working perfectly fine. Cool. Open up, uh, what else can we, what else do I have running on this? Do I have any network stuff? I think I have some network tools on here. Oh, I can run iperf on it. So let's open up another tab. Run it on mine. Uh, dash server. So I'm still getting, you know, gigabit speed while it's doing the transfer here. So that's not causing any issues. So no problems there connecting to my server or my desktop here, which is the 3.9. This is at the, what was the IP address of this one? I think 190. Yeah, so 190, uh, same network, so nice fast transfers. We're at 87%. As you can see, the machine, no load. It's not really doing much. We're at 91% now, almost done moving. Let's open up and actually be running something so you can see the pause that occurs. Well, this isn't updating much. Uh, maybe top will look better. And... Oh, there's our little pause. If Did you notice it? <laughs> Just for a second. 
It's now migrated. We'll go over here and pull the VMs. It's now on the other server, so it's on Zen number two. You watched it in real time. Now, this is actually interesting. Did you notice that the load jumped just for a second? There was a uh, pause just for that second where there's, uh, so to speak, the hard drive is disconnected. So I think they said the pause is roughly, depending on speed of your server, about a second. So for that one second that it couldn't write something, it pauses. But one second is not exactly downtime. And obviously, we didn't even drop any network connections. Um, everything's just working perfectly fine. We'll go over here, run an iperf again. Same thing, speed's the same. It's just on a different server, on a different segment of the network, I'm about to complete the test. But that's it for Zen Motion. It moves over live VMs as easy as the tools that are in some of the other popular hypervisors. I've been using this whenever we gotta do maintenance, uh, we can just migrate them over to one server, do whatever maintenance on either server and migrate them back. And I can do this in the middle of the day. Uh, we've even migrated our free PBX system. Um, the only thing I haven't seen is because it uses UDP, it may drop a call if it's on UDP. I haven't, I gotta, that's one of my to-do list tests is uh, have a live phone call the entire time. But obviously with that one second pause, I don't even know if that would drop it. I know moving like the Unify and the Screen Connect, all those I've moved perfectly fine with this and not had any issues um, at all. We've moved free PBX back and forth with no issues. Um, I just don't know if I had a live phone call while I was doing it would work or not. Uh, that's a test maybe I'll do right now. What time is it? <laughs> I don't have any phone calls, but I can fake one. Let's go ahead and go ahead and migrate it. And we'll fast forward this one until the call part. I'll wait until that last second and we'll have a call open on it. So I just did a test call. Obviously it's only a 25% now, uh, but the test call works perfectly fine. So I'll open up a call when it's at the 99% mark and uh, we'll see if it drops my call on my phone. My phone is also, I'm using Zoipert, it's what we use here, and it's registered to the free PBX. So it has an active connection, we'll see if it loses that connection at all, just the, what they refer to as a registration connection for your uh, VoIP phones. I know when I moved it before, our other VoIP phones didn't drop, but this one's Zoiper, so I'll see if there's any difference at all. All right, we're at the 95% mark. Oh, well, I'm on the phone. And it did, wow. I don't know, I didn't have it on speakerphone. Man, I missed it. I'm not gonna do this again, sorry. But if you heard, if you could hear how quiet the voice is on this, there, it actually paused just for a second. It paused while my voice was playing the our, our welcome message on our phone. So it actually works. We can actually migrate with live phone calls because uh, I called my office with my phone. And other than that pause, it kind of like did a little fade out and pause. Boom. But uh, also you may have noticed here, nothing was dropped. So we're still here in... Uh, Free PBX that's working. My phone's still registered. It didn't have. It has no idea that the uh, system moved to another server. So there you go. There's a demo of Zen Motion and even moving a running phone system with phone calls. It apparently works fine. A fun test. All right. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.